BMW for 2023 is implementing an LCI, which is a light refresh from the exterior and the interior. Today, BMW of Wesley Chapel has given us the 2022 BMW X7 xDrive 40i in the Arctic Gray Metallic. We have a lot of upgrades, starting with the cold weather package for the interior for your front and rear. They're gonna be heated seats. The luxury seating package includes massage for the front occupants. Park assist package, that's gonna give you the 3D with your driver recorder. You don't need to have a dash cam. You have it with this and a 360 degree reverse camera. Premium package is going to give you the gesture swipe. Design Pure Executive, that's gonna give us the gloss black rails. We have the gloss black for the rims, 21 inch setup. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna go over all the specs and details, starting now. The new BMW X7 is definitely the vehicle that stands out in a parking lot. And I like the aggressive bulge that comes in the front with the enlarged kidney grills because with this vehicle, I think it sets the best in class for all of the BMWs when you get this enlarged grill brushing into your adaptive LED headlamps. On the lower bumper, you're gonna get the chrome for the 2023. They're going to change the front bumper. So this is not going to be here. It's gonna be more inwards and it's gonna have a little different look also for the headlamps assembly because it's going to be new it's going to be a two-part so it's going to look a little bit more sporty but i don't think this is going to look old it's still going to have a classic bmw stance four corner air suspension so your ground clearance is going to be great it's not going to be the widest or the tallest but the weight distribution is one of the best at 48.4 to 51.6 21 inch gloss black five spoke alloy wheels is what we have set with this front disc reading at 15.5 inches the rear at 15.5 seven double wishbone front suspension a multi-link rear suspension curb weight at 5370 pounds this is not going to be the longest 203.3 inches the range rover land rover will be the shortest otherwise this is actually shorter than the bins than the cadillac even that wagoneer a wheelbase 122.2 inches the gloss black on the roof rails and on the side of the rear window with the lower roof spoiler set it apart and i do like that we got the chrome line that goes into the tail lamp assembly because it's a unique structure instead of having a full light bar like all the other vehicles are doing in the refresh you will be able to tell a little bit of a difference a payload is over 1200 pounds towing at over 5400 pounds it's not going to be the best in the class that goes to the jeep wagoneer power tailgate going inside to one of the best cargo at 12.8 cubic feet you have all your electronics on the left side. So you can lower or raise the benches. You have a 12 volt charger, storage underneath the floor. The third row bench reclines electronically at a 50-50 split, increasing the cargo to 48.6 cubic feet. You can fold those captain chairs down. 90.4 cubic feet is going to be the max. This is not the longest vehicle. To get this good of cargo just shows how much capacity you have with this, plus you can still tow. Let's go inside, start it up, so we can hear that exhaust note. The new BMW X7 with this Arctic Gray Metallic definitely shines with the gloss black. I think it just nailed it right. If they put the chrome in the gloss black, I think it still would give a little bit more of a sports style because 
This is a BMW. It's one of the long vehicles that they make. Aerodynamic lines, you're not gonna have too many because this is a box structure and they back the performance with a 3.0 liter BMW twin power turbo inline six cylinder with EQ Boost technology, producing 335 horsepower and 330 pound feet of torque. That's paired to a ZF8 speed automatic transmission, achieving 19 to 24 MPGs. For the TCI update, increase of 40 horsepower plus more torque, zero to 60, 5.8 seconds, faster than the bins, faster than the Escalade, a touch slower than the Range Rover Land Rover, but the price starts 20 some thousand dollars more than this. Quarter mile at 14.1 seconds, which is faster than everybody except for the Jeep Wagoneer, a top speed at 130 miles per hour. So is the 2023 what you're wanting or the 2022? I like what we've done here. The styling to it is very iconic. BMW performance styling for an SAV. Let me know in the comments what you think about the 2022 BMW X7 X Drive 40i as we go into the interior go over the tech and take this for our test run. Entering inside the BMW X7, you're going to receive 41.9 inches of headroom, 39.8 inches of legroom. The headroom is actually the best in class unless you're thinking about the Escalade. It's a little bit better. Otherwise, this beats all of the competition. Vanesca Cognac leather is what we got. 20 way power adjustments, heated, ventilated, massage, perforated. At the price point we're at, you want all of those settings. The dashboard will be altered for the 2023. For this setup, it's going to be standard and the same as the prior generation. The touchscreen navigation also will be a upgrade to the iX screen, so it'll be a near 15 inch screen in the center and 12.3 digital gauge cluster. So for here, we have a 12.3 with the gesture and the pinch with the swipe. Click home and you can toggle through here. These are your quick apps. Click into the app so you can see everything we have. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, streaming Bluetooth audio, Amazon Alexa. Here we have your carrying car, different relaxation modes, which if we click on one, you have to order to activate them now, which is, Something that I've been talking about, how they're trying to charge you at subscription fees. Your experience mode, when you click into it, here we go. And it's opening up the moonroof automatically for us. Put it into reverse. We do have the 360 degree reverse camera with the automatic parking and the backup assist. So we're going to put the auto braking on. So as you see, it's reading at 15 feet. Put it into reverse. It's going to turn the steering wheel for me. As long as I'm holding the brakes, just be careful with the brakes because it's taking a sharp turn. And it will go all the way to the desired stop point. Just make sure you keep your foot on the brake and watch. And that's how the auto braking works. Click into this car here and you got a 3D view, which unfortunately you can't do anything here. However, you do have the gesture. As soon as I take this off the screen, you have the gesture so you can move it any which way you like with your hands. Or you can simply touch the screen over here so you can actually see it as well. And you can see any obstacles or anything there. You can do it into the car wash, which is one of my favorites that I always talk about because it shows the front lines to make it easy for you to pull in to get a car wash. We have the iDrive 7, which the new model will be an iDrive 8. This is non-touch. It's only rotary and you can push it, but you have voice recognition and you got a touch screen. Five climate control settings. I like that you have the touch sensitive buttons here to assign your different radio stations. Open up inside here and you got a wireless charging pad, a storage compartment, cup holders, a 16.9 ounce fits without any issues. You have your USB and a 12 volt. You get the wood inlays that's going around this gloss black and the silver. I do like the gear lever with the gloss black and you got your driving mode select. You also can raise and lower the suspension because it's an air suspension. The wood trim goes into the dash and I do like how it's not so many different materials in the dash. They keep it simple. Wood, Sensitech, contrast stitching, silver, 
with a touch of gloss black. So it's not necessarily all over the place and it actually fits the way they do it. Very modern look. The steering wheel, multi-function, paddle shifters, it's heated. I do like the stitch work on the horn area for the BMW. The gauge cluster, we have it on the Eco Pro to help you get optimal gas consumption. Click into the comfort, it will change the tachometer and change it to sport mode. You will always have your navigation in the center. You can change through the settings there on the side. So you have your pound feet of torque, horsepower, G-force reading. You can also do your audio sound system and it will show you the mode that you're in. We have a heads up display, which is a very large one. We have a storage compartment on the driver's side here, which is a large little pocket. Elbows are gonna be relatively sporty. Open up inside here, it's a deep storage with a USB port, door panel, harder materials on the top. You have a lot of buttons, but all these buttons mean something. You can put the rear sunshades down, they're power adjustment, which is awesome. I like that we have the power sunshades because manual, you know, they do that in the Audis and I just think for the price point, you should definitely get it and you get it in this. Two sunroofs, one which is a pano and one sunroof for the third row. So everybody's taken care of for their vitamin D. Your massage seats, ventilated seats. You can also adjust the rear seats so you can do every single thing. Plus open the tailgate all right there. Software, you rest your elbows, ambient lighting. Harman Kardon stereo with the mesh inlays. The storage pocket is huge. You can fit liters of water. You don't need to worry about 16.9 ounce water bottles. So I do like what we're working with. Soft closed doors. We're getting full luxury and this is under six figures. Let's see how I look in the second row. For the second row, I'm at 39.9 inches of headroom, 37.6 inches of leg room. I have a USB port right in front of me in an area that can, I can hook something for a tablet, a TV, whatever that you want to put. Power sun shades, like I was saying. You can open the pano and the third row all in here, which is awesome. Almost the best in class for headroom in the second row. When we're comparing it to the Cadillac, this is better. Comparing it to the Land Rover Range Rover, this is better. Software, you rest your elbows, dual climate control setting, heated seats, cup holders here in the center can fit about a 30 ounce. You got a 12 volt, two USB-C ports, storage beyond both of the front seats, air vents also on the side pillars. You can adjust these seats five different ways which is all power adjustment. Now they are slower when we're entering into the third row, but you gotta give a give and take. And realistically speaking, the fact that we have all of these amenities in this vehicle at the price category that we're at, it's amazing. Door panels, gonna be harder materials on the top. One touch up and down for your dual pane windows, ambient light and the storage pocket is huge yet again. Let's see how I look in the third row. For the third row, I'm at 36.6 inches of headroom, 33.3 inches of legroom, six foot three in the third row, sitting comfortably, my fifth climate control setting, heated rear on the third row seats. That's crazy. Cup holders, I would say 16.9 ounce is going to be the max. Where you rest your elbows or your armrests, nice and soft. The back window isn't so big, but there's so much windows around us and you have your own sunroof back here. I do like that you can feel the air everywhere because the air is right here in the ceiling. I do like how I sit back here because comparing it to the Rivals, it's one of the best in class for leg space. Yes, the Escalade is going to be better, but that vehicle is nearly five to 10 inches longer. So when you have that much length, obviously, but for a vehicle the size of this, to have this much room inside, they did a good job with the interior specs. Taking the 2022 BMW X7 40i out for a test run, 335 horsepower with 330 pound feet of torque, zero to 60 under six seconds. And we're gonna put it in sport mode. Gonna stop in the middle of this road here. We're gonna give her a little go. She drives nice. I do like air suspension in bigger or larger SUVs because you just glide over everything. Now, obviously because of the horsepower and torque, people might say, well, is it going to be enough because this is a bigger vehicle? And I've driven the M50i as well, and that one just has an enormous amount of power. So it just really depends on what you really want as a preference, but 
Is it enough? Yes. Here we go. Super quick, quiet inside otherwise. You get a little bit of that exhaust note. M twin power turbo, inline six cylinder. So it's nice. The fact that we're getting a vehicle under six figures in the BMW with this much luxury also. And you can see the dynamics isn't too bad in the sense of this is a bigger vehicle. You can take some turns, it's air suspension, it's not necessarily top heavy. The weight distribution, it's pretty close to 50 50. The hood, it's long, so it projects that luxury and you know where your front bumpers are. The A-pillars are pushed back, you got your blind spot monitoring, because if I'm in this car driving it, I'm not gonna be looking back there, but if I had to, all the windows are relatively big enough that there's not really too much blind spots. So you're taken care of with safety. In the front, you got the pedestrian detection. The rear, you got the cross traffic alert. I mean, what more do you need? Also, when you let off the wheel a little bit or you touch the lines, it will kind of rotate you back into the line. So the safety is spot on. The gesture, because I move my hands when I speak, is always going to be active. That's the only thing that just drives me crazy, but I do like how the setup is on this dashboard. Now the real test, we're going like 10 miles an hour. and we caught up to the Mazda CX-5. So it just shows you when you get a single turbo, this is twin scroll turbo, the difference in performance, if you need to go into the interstate, you're gonna be able to do it as you get up to a higher speed. The noise doesn't necessarily filter in too bad, but it feels a bit bumpy and that's derived because we got 21 inch wheels. They go up to a 23 inch wheel. So depending on how much sport you want, that's gonna be the main thing. You can see with this gesture control and the brakes. It's good, it's a longer vehicle. It's not the longest vehicle, so I do like that we're kind of in between. Turn radius is gonna be just in a second. So until then, listen to that turn signal sound. Just lovely. Turn radius and more or less a stop point. About two lanes, we have it in Eco Pro. Whew. The pedal. Ah, there we go. So Eco Pro puts you in a different class car. The pedal is extremely heavy. It's it's just not, it feels sluggish. It feels like a very heavy vehicle. When you put it in sport, livens it up, makes the steering wheel a little bit more heavy, put it into comfort, and it's going to make that steering pretty artificial, as you can see. The pedal isn't as heavy as the Eco Pro. So that is something that kind of helps, so that way you get a gauge with this. Now there is three things I like and three things I dislike. Is anything more than that, I'd be buying this X7. The three things that I like, you're gonna obviously know right off the bat, we have five zone climate control. Yes, you're paying for that package. You have AC, ventilated, heated front seats, and massage, and 20-way power adjustment. This is great. The back seat gets five adjustments, which kind of wish it had at least 10 like the 740i, but I kinda get it. The second thing that I like about the vehicle is the feel in the ride. The air suspension is super smooth, even with the altercations of 21 inch wheels. You do feel some of the ride, but it really filters it out good. Green light, here we go. night and day difference from Eco Pro to sport or an individual where you tailor everything to sport mode. The last thing that I like about the vehicle is it's not over the top on the dash. There is a lot of buttons, which we'll talk about that in a second, but I don't know, I'm kind of thinking the iX is going to look a little different with that setup. I do like the fact that it's one glass curved panel. That's cool. It's just, this has been a very, awesome setup the way they have it tailored and they even moved it closer to the driver so it makes it easier for you to engage plus you have the the gesture 
it's just when I did the iX, I didn't necessarily like that screen in the i4, and I'm seeing it in all the BMW because that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna be in every single model. Three things that I dislike about the vehicle starts off with there is a lot of buttons, so there's a lot going on. You obviously get used to it as you own it. It's just at the beginning, maybe the first few weeks, you're going to be just pushing buttons and looking, and it's gonna distract you from driving. The second thing that I dislike, I have encountered this many a times. When you are using the third row seats, the power seat adjustment. I love the power seat adjustments, don't get me wrong, it's just they sometimes get a little mixed up in the sense that they don't work. And then you gotta wait, then you gotta reset, then you gotta do it again, and it just, it takes a little bit longer. Plus the second row to get into the third row, I mean, it's great that you got the power seat adjustment, but let's just leave that maybe to the convertible specs or speed it up because you can make that go a little bit faster. The last thing that I dislike about the vehicle, they've already taken care of. They've increased the power 40 horsepower. So I'm going to be excited to see how the 2023 drives because 40 horsepower in this vehicle, the way BMW does their dynamics and their engine is a huge difference. That's like a 20% increase. And I know it's not statistically, I'm just saying the way they do their dynamics, Mercedes, BMW just really give you a lot of output with a small engine. As for everything else, comfort is good. The ride quality is good. The AC, you feel it in every single row. Quietness, it is a little bit louder than I would like in the sense of comparing it to some of the rivals. The Jeep Wagoneer is gonna be a little bit more quiet. You will hear the Hemi engine. The new 2023 is going to change the engine to the new i6 twin turbo, which is going to have a lot more power, by the way. The Land Rover Range Rover is always a very quiet vehicle. Just, it's really hard to get that vehicle on the road right now because of all the chip shortage and everything that's going on with the COVID issue that we used to have. So comparing it to this, they do offer a third row into that. It's the new L. They're only gonna have it maybe for a year or two max. If I'm comparing it to Mercedes Benz, they don't do the GLS 63S anymore. That was my favorite vehicle. Cadillac, the Escalade is awesome. They have over 50 inches of glass. Very hard to compete with that much for the infotainment. But if I'm looking for the vehicle for long term, which way should I go? BMW is gonna be pretty inexpensive for service for a luxury vehicle. It's gonna be a little bit cheaper than the Mercedes Benz. When you are taking these things in consideration, that does help me say, you know what, the X7, the 40i is efficient for what I need for a daily use. Plus, if I need the power, I just push it. <laughs> it actually pushes your head back at 335 pound-feet of torque. I like to thank BMW of Wesley Chapel for giving us this 2022 BMW X7 for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click the next video, the subscribe button. Check out the details, the merchandise, the website, and everything we do here at Hawkeye Rides. Is it better than a 2023? That's going to be tough, but when I do the review, I will definitely let you know which one I think is better.